Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today I've got a crazy integral that I adapted from an integral that I found on the channel, Methalysis World. Um, his integral was this, without that X. I just added that X in there um, so that I could use Feynman integration to solve it. Um, so, yeah, where to start? Um, well, first of all, I want to put a disclaimer. I am going to kind of be uh, playing fast and loose with the convergence of some functions um, and with the use of, you know, taking the imaginary parts of things. Um, so this is not going to be rigorous. We do end up with the right answer. And I have a feeling that all the steps that I take can be justified. Um, I just, I don't know how to justify them. Again, we end up with the right answer. And this is not a rigorous math channel. So don't put this as a solution. If you found this on a test, don't give what I'm about to do as a solution. Because you'll probably lose points for it. Um, but let's just get started. Okay, so first off, I would like to use Euler's formula and uh, just the plain old formula for um, a hyperbolic sine of x. So we know that sine hyperbolic of x, that's just equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x over two. And that's that's kind of that's kind of like uh, sine x, just without the, the i's attached, without the i there, the i there, and the i there. Um, so let's use that. Okay, so I'll leave some space here because we're gonna do some more stuff. Um, so we're definitely going to have this x. And for this sine x, I'm going to uh, call that the imaginary part, which I'll bring outside the integral, of e to the ix. The imaginary part of e to the ix is sine x, because that's cosine x plus i sine x. Take the imaginary part, you get sine x. And of course... Um, that i sine x multiplies this entire thing. So taking the imaginary part, you know, we'd still have the rest of it. Okay, so then this is over this, just this, over 2, or, a, or in other words, this entire thing multiplied by 2. So we have 2 times the imaginary part of x, e to the i x, over e to the x minus e to the negative x dx from 0 to infinity. Okay, now what? Well, um, hmm. First, let's rewrite this as e to the x raised to the i power to make the next step a little bit more clear. That's e to the x raised to the i power. Now, let's let um, x equal natural long u, and we all know that that means that u is equal to e to the x. That's just so I can write dx right away as 1 over u du. All right. So now we have i being equal to um, 2 times the imaginary part of the integral going from, well, if u is e to the x, e to the 0 is 1, e to the infinity is still infinity, x, we know, is natural log u, and then we have times, I'll put that in parentheses, 
E to the X, which is just U to the I. So this is just times U to the I over E to the X is natural log, I'm sorry, E to the X is U, so that's U minus E to the negative U, which I will write 1 over U times dx, which is 1 over u, 1 over u du. All right, we'll distribute this 1 over u in here, or rather distribute this u in the denominator to make this u squared minus 1. Okay, now we'll make another substitution, which we technically could have done all as one substitution, but I'm going to let uh, u equal 1 over w, which means that w is 1 over u also. All right, that means that du is negative 1 over w squared dw. Um, all right, so let's apply this substitution to I. All right, so now we have, it's still going to be two times the imaginary part of something. But now we get the integral going from, let's see, our W is 1 over 1, which is still 1. Our, let's see, 1 over infinity is 0 natural log of u, which is 1 over w, so we have natural log of 1 over w. Um, let's call that, let's see, 1 over w to the i, we'll call that w to the negative i, and then over um, 1 over w squared minus 1 times negative 1 over w squared dw. All right. This is negative natural log w right here. So I'll use that negative sign to switch our bounds. Okay. Now I'm going to distribute this uh, w squared into here. So this will become a w squared. And this will become a 1. And now we're just left with this negative sign. Which I will just put out there as a negative. And now I'm going to just go ahead and, and bring uh, W to X. I'm just going to replace all my W's with X's so that we have, um, you know, something more familiar. X squared. This is X to the negative I. This is natural log X. And this is DX. And I'll get rid of all my substitutions. Everything up there still technically correct, even if I don't write the substitutions. All right. Let me just do a really quick check here. Let's see. Yeah. That would have been negative 1 over W. Negative would have. Yeah. No, that, that's right. Okay. I was pretty careful. All right. So now what? Now, let's let some function f of t be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of, let's see, x t 
to the t over 1 minus x squared dx. Okay. Now, this doesn't converge for any real values of t. The key word being there is real values of t. Notice that um, eventually what we're going to want is this. Let's just go ahead and take the derivative of this thing even though we technically shouldn't because this does not converge. We're going to, uh, we're going to take the derivative anyway. So f, yell at me if you want. f prime of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t natural log x over 1 minus x squared dx. All right. So now we can see that i is actually going to be equal to negative 2 times the imaginary part of f prime evaluated at negative i. Yep, this is negative 2 imaginary part of, and this thing is exactly f prime at negative i. Okay. Now, mm, you can, now we can kind of justify, um, after a little while, we can justify taking the derivative with respect to t, since um, we will eventually be actually plugging in a purely imaginary number for t, uh, and taking its imaginary part. And I'm not going to show it here, but if you do take the imaginary part of f evaluated at negative i, you do get an integral that does converge. Um, I'm not going to show that here. It's, it's just long and it's, it's messy. Um, but you do get an integral that converges if you take the imaginary part of our original function f evaluated at negative i. You can verify that for yourself if you'd like. Um, but that's why it's kind of justified to um, take the derivative with respect to t, since we will end up, we will, we will be um, plugging in negative i and taking the imaginary part of that derivative. Um, still, there's probably more work that needs to be done to show that you can actually do this. Like I said, yell at me if you want, but we end up getting the right answer in the end. Um, so I'm sure this step can be justified somehow. Um, if you're an expert in real analysis, let me know and uh, tell me why it's okay to do that, <laughs> please. All right, well, let's continue. So... Um, so now we have f prime of t, and if we take negative 2 times it, take its imaginary part when evaluated at t is equal to negative i, we get the value of our original integral over there. All right, so now let's uh, derive a different form of f of t. And I'm not going to go through the entire process, but this is what it turns out to be. f of t is actually, uh, in terms of a sum, we can show that this is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2n plus t plus 1. And you do that by um, using the Taylor series representation for 1 minus, x, or for 1 over 1 minus x squared, uh, and then adding that x to the t inside it, uh, switching the bounds of integration and summation, evaluating the integral, and uh, ending up with just one sum. But this f of t, that, that is equal to that. It is equal to that. Um, so f prime of t is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 
negative 1 over 2n plus t plus 1 all squared. Okay. So now what we do is we multiply this by negative 2, evaluate it at negative i, and then take the imaginary part of it, and we have the answer to our integral. So let's write that down. Uh, i is equal to negative 2 times the imaginary part of this thing evaluated at negative i. Well, this thing is already a negative, so we'll just get rid of that. And then just say the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 plus i all squared. All right, so that's true. Now, um, it's tough to take the imaginary part of that as is. So what we'll do is we will multiply the top and bottom by the complex conjugate of this squared. So we're gonna multiply the bottom by 2n plus one minus i all squared. So, oh, I'm sorry. We were evaluating this function at negative i. So we're actually multiplying the top and bottom by 2n plus 1 plus i all squared. 2n plus 1 plus i all squared. All right, so the purpose of doing that was so that we would have a purely real part on the denominator. Well, let's see, this is something squared times something squared, so it's just gonna be this times this all squared. Well, this is something minus something, and then something plus something. So this is going to be 2n plus one squared minus i squared, or just plus, one. And this part is actually squared. Yeah. Hope you followed that. Okay, so let's clean that up a little bit to make it more readable. Plus one. So that's a, very, that's a very strange thing we have in the denominator. We have 2n plus 1 all squared, then we add 1 to that, and then we square that. All right, and now we have this. Well, that's going to be, I'm just going to write it to the left. That's going to be uh, 2n, I'm sorry, to the right, plus 1 squared plus... 2i times 2n plus 1, right? We have this part squared, that's right there, plus 2 times this times this, which is, yeah, 2i n plus 1, and then um, plus i squared, or simply minus so that part is just that. Okay. But we're taking the imaginary part of it. So let's get rid of that and get rid of everything up here that is not imaginary. That goes away. The imaginary part of that is zero. The imaginary part of that is zero. And the imaginary part of this is just two. times 2n plus 1. 2n plus 1. 
All right. Bringing that two out, getting rid of these parentheses, and we have our final answer. This is four times this extremely messy sum. And that is the actual answer. That, that is uh, um, the actual answer to that integral, despite the, uh, the kind of wishy-washy methods I use to get there. Um, I have a feeling that these steps, uh, if you're an expert in real analysis, you can justify them. And like I said at the beginning, this is more of a math trick channel. This is not super rigorous. Um, and like I said, you do end up getting the right answer. So uh, this is it. That integral right there is equal to this sum. And I hope you enjoyed that.